Now this certain label is attached to this certain input field. You can see these languages as the option of the drop down. And when you will select the multiple attribute, you will be able to select multiple values in this. And that will increase the width of this text area. That is nothing but the number of characters that you want to see at a time in one single line. So here you can see we have grouped these two elements inside a field set. Now we can provide a legend for the field set. A data list is actually a combination of input element with a drop down. So you can certainly select any of these values. But there is one interesting thing in the data list. Hey guys, I'm Amit Kumar and in this video we are going to talk about HTML form elements. Forms are something which we have seen a lot of times on our web pages. It is the place where we provide values and forms are used to collect values to take values from the user. An HTML form is used to collect this user input. The user input is then can be sent to the server where a server side scripting language like PHP handles that specific data or we can also use the user input at client side where the client side scripting languages like JavaScript handles that data. Form element is used to create HTML form for user input. HTML form element can contain following form elements. So HTML form element is the parent element and it can contain multiple child's element inside it for different types of form components. For example, input. It can be used in many ways. So there are different ways we use this input element and for what specific purpose we are using it. We specify the purpose of it with the help of type. So whatever value you specify to this type attribute, the element changes accordingly. We will see the val different values of it and how we can utilize it at different stages. Label defines label for specific form element. So labels are nothing but the labels that you can see. Like for example, if you have seen a text field to provide username, so a text is written in front of it as username and the same goes for password. So this username text and password text is nothing but a label. Select is used to provide a drop down list or a combo box where you click and it converts into a list from where you can select any value from the multiple values. So select is used for that. Text area is used for multi line input field when you are providing a paragraph rather than providing a single statement. So that time you can use a text area. Button is nothing but a clickable button that you can provide inside your form. Field set is used to group related data in a form. So when you have related data and you want to keep in one section of the form, you can relate it and keep it in one section and that section is nothing but a field set. Legends are legend is used with field set to provide a caption to that field set to actually mention what this section meant for. Data list is used to specify a predefined list or predefined options to the user. So it's already pretty much of talk and now it's time to see the things practically. Hey guys, so here we are on our VS code and let me just add few more HTML files and this time to understand the HTML form elements. So let me just quickly add an HTML file over here and let me name it as input.html and I'm going to add the basic structure of HTML over here. Here you go. And let me change the title of this page as HTML input element. Now we can create HTML form with help of form elements. So I'm going to add the form element over here. And the two elements that we are going to understand over here are input element and label element. So we can create an input element with the help of input tag and we can provide a type to it. Now there are various types that we can add to an in input element. We are going to understand about that later on. But the first type that I want to show over here is a text type. So let me add the type attribute and the value of it, let it be text. So let me save this page and let me go to HTML form elements and click on input.html. So this is a text field which is there because of this input type text. Now we can provide a label to it. So here we will provide a label and we can provide a name to this label. Let's suppose username. Let me save this and here you go. 
So this is how you can provide a label and an input element and we always attach a label to the element and the way to do that is we provide an ID to this input field. The ID of it let it be username and let's provide a name to this field as well and let it be username only. And how we attach a label to an input field is with the help of for attribute in the label. So we will add a for attribute and value of this for attribute should match the ID of the field. So the ID of the field is username. So that will be the value of this for attribute. Now this certain label is attached to this certain input field. Now let's move on and see how we can add the next form element. The next form element that we are going to see is select element. So let's name it as select.html. Let me just copy paste the content. Let me change the title of this page as HTML select element. And here I am going to use the select element itself. So let me add the select element. Now select is basically used to create a drop down list. Now to provide various options to this drop down list, we can have an option attribute. But before I move on to that, let me provide an ID to this. So let me give it an ID as languages and let me provide a name to it as languages itself. Now it's not required to give the same name as you have given the ID. I'm also adding a label over here. So the label will be choose language and that's it. Now let me just provide a for attribute to this label so that I can attach it to the select element and the for value will be the ID of the select which will be languages itself. Now let me show you the output of it. So let me go back, refresh over here and let me open the select.html. Now you can see a drop down but the drop down is empty. So let me add some elements to this drop down, some values to this drop down and to add a certain value we need an option tag or an option element. Now here I'm providing few languages. Now when I will save it, you can see these languages as the option of the drop down. Now we need to provide value to these options. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the value attribute to these options and the value will vary. So for the C, the value will be C for C++ value will be C++. Now whatsoever value you want to show will be there within the option element as context and whatsoever value you want to pass will be there in the value attribute. So whenever I will select C, it will pass C over there. Suppose on the selection of C, I want to pass C language. So I will provide C language as the value of the value attribute. So here I am saving the page and the output will not vary right now. Now as you can see for the select element, the first value is the selected value by default. But if you want to select any certain value, like I want the apex to be selected always, I can use a selected attribute to this apex. And when I will save, you can see it will by default select apex. Now it's up to you as many values you want to select over here. By default, you can select only one value from the select element. But in case if you want to select multiple values, you should use multiple attribute. And when you will select the multiple attribute, you will be able to select multiple values in this. So now this drop down is changed to a list box from where you can select more than one values by control click or by shift click. Now the next form element that we are going to see is text area. So let me quickly add a HTML file over here as text area dot HTML. Let me add the HTML basic structure for it. And here I'm going to change it as HTML text area. So as you can see, I have added a form, I have added a label and here inside the label, I'm removing the for. Now this is for a description because text area is used to provide text in more than one lines. So I will use it as description. The element that I'm going to use is text area element and I can provide a name and an ID for it. So here I'm giving it a name and an ID as description and in the for I will specify the ID which is description itself. So let me open this page. Let me refresh here and let me open text area.html 
So here is our text area where we can add data in multiple lines. Now definitely you can increase the size of the text area but if you want to increase the size by default you can do that with the help of rows and columns attribute. So I'm going to add rows attribute over here and I'm going to provide a value 10 to it and let me save this. So you can see you can now add 10 different lines to it. Similarly you can provide a value to calls which is columns and let's suppose 30 and let me increase it to 50 and let me save this and let me save this and that will increase the width of this text area. That is nothing but the number of characters that you want to see at a time in one single line. The next element that we are going to see here is button. So let me change the title as text area and button and I'm going to add the button here itself. So let me add a button over here. To add a button, the element is button itself. And you can see a small icon over there because we haven't provided any name to it. So let me name it as click me and save and that certain name will appear over there on the button. Now whenever you use a button, don't forget to specify the type as button as well. And here you go. And if you want them to appear in two different lines, definitely you can use a BR tag and they will appear in two different lines. Now the next element that we are going to see is actually a field set. So let me add a field set dot HTML over here and let me quickly add the content from this page. And here I'm going to create two input fields and I will name it as first name and last name. I'm also going to change the ID and label for it. And so do I am going to change the for attributes value and let me open this page for you. So let me refresh this. Let me open field set. So here you go. I want them to appear in two different lines. So I'm using a BR tag over here and let me add two BR tags to increase the space in between them. Now I'm going to add all of them inside field set. So let me create a field set quickly over here. And all this content will come inside field set itself. So here you can see we have grouped these two elements inside a field set. Now we can provide a legend for the field set that will be nothing but the heading of the field set or the caption of the field set. And I'm going to name it as username. And that's where the caption appears for a field set. So that's we are going to that's how we are going to add a field set which is going to group multiple related components together. And now the last element that we are going to see over here is a data list. So let me quickly add a data list.html. Let me quickly add the component from here. Let me change the name. And here I'm going to add the data list. So I'm copying the content from the select element. So here I'm keeping it in the data list from the select element. And the interesting thing is here we need not to use option as an element. We can simply use as an empty tag where we specify the value to it. Now we are going to use it as a data list. So instead of select, I'm going to use data list and I can provide a ID and name to it. So I'm removing this multiple section as well. Now a data list also has an input element. So let me create an input element for this data list. And here I'm going to use an attribute as list. The value of this attribute should match the value of the ID. And let me open this page for you. So let me go back, click on refresh and open the data list. So here is the data list. A data list is actually a combination of input element with a drop down. So you can certainly select any of these values, but there is one interesting thing in the data list. So let me first select any of the value that will appear here. But if I want, I can add any new value as well, which is not part of the data list. Now, this is one of the feature that we don't have in the select. So if we are using data list, we can certainly choose from the given option as well as we can provide our own values. But if we are using select, we can only choose from the given option over there. So guys, these are the various HTML form elements and these are the various ways we can use these form elements. That marks the end of this video. See you soon in the next video. Till then, thank you and take care.